Welcome to this episode of Esports Connected, brought to you by me, your host, Megan Van Petten. Such an exciting day today, hailing from St. Louis. Welcome to the show, Robert, with Bro Got Game Foundation. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Robert. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on. I'm really excited. Um, you know, I appreciate everything that the Esports and Trade Association is doing, um, you know, in this space. And, um, you know, it's only right when, you know, the real ones link up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're too kind. Yes. What a name. Bro got game. <laughs> yeah. That is great. So tell us, tell us the origin story. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, so Bro got game started um, as a YouTube channel, right? I used to stream. I used to make viral, funny videos with my friends. And when I worked for PlayStation, I used to get all the newest technology. And I'd jump on YouTube and show it off. But I also was really good at fighting games. So a lot of the, you know, community and kids would challenge me to Mortal Kombat, you know, Mark versus Capcom, Street Fighter. And I'd do them really dirty and put it out on YouTube. And uh, we kind of built the culture off of that for, for years. <laughs> well, I love the name. I love the name. Um, and, you, you know, I'm also one that just loves foundations. Yes, so, yes. yeah, it's the <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us. How did you end up here? I know you've you've done some great things and worked at some great companies, and now you're bringing it all to your own backyard and more. So let's yeah. hear what you've got going over there. Oh my goodness, it's it, I don't even know. Let's see how where to even start. You know, we when I I worked for marketing for Sony, so I was a part of the marketing team that got off the PlayStation Four, the Pro, the VR, the Five, like crazy things like PlayLink, introducing phones to the PlayStation console. Um, but over the years, I would see that there was never a lot of gaming movements happening in St. Louis. So I will, I will, PlayStation would give me a one day a year to do anything philanthropic, use them for any uh, philanthropy initiative. I will always come back home to St. Louis, my old high school, and do a gaming experience for those kids in my school. Mm. Not necessarily knowing what it was doing. Over the years, I started to realize we were helping with so many things like, you know, student empowerment, you know, violence prevention, workforce development. And all of these cool things, I started to say like, hey, maybe I should do this more than once a year. Of course, it didn't fit the workers in a sense, like position, like it wasn't really getting my job done, but it was something that was fueling me over the years. So I was able to, you know, take a step out of what I was doing as my regular role and do this full time with a lot of the connections that I made in the industry to start this foundation. So that's a gift. And I really believe that we learn about giving back from our mentors, our peers, our parents, yeah. our communities. And like you were fired up by that was like your best day of the year. And yes. it and it drove it drove your career, right? To foundation living. Yeah. And that's that was something that I really um man, I gotta give PlayStation a lot of credit for that one. You know, it, yes. it changed my life, you know, honestly. It allowed me to um, have the opportunity to develop. It also allowed me to be creative. It allowed me, especially with that one day philanthropy event the year, but it also gave me a sense of real community. So, you know, with those initiatives, I said, hey, I need to take this full step, you know, because a lot of the kids look up to me in the city. It's just more yeah. so how am I applying what I'm learning and what I'm doing to really try to make an impact? Because huh, the way that the kids are thinking today in time, it's like they have this crazy false sense of reality. Um, and it could be depicted by social media is like not a lot of inspiration in our community. Yeah. Um, I'm not a rapper. I'm not an athlete. You know, I'm a guy who worked my butt off and came back with resources. So I'm trying to use it. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I've got to, I've got to also say, you know, thank you, Sony. Thank you, PlayStation for, yeah. because they're really doing that. They're really giving the give back days. Some of the things that I, I jokingly say is I love sponsorship and fundraising because I can help people remember yeah. how good it feels to give back. Yeah. And if more, if more people would look at sales as really solutions in truly, truly establishing, and I'm so glad sales is more called like business development or partnership than sales. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause it is. It is. But th things people don't realize is sales. And, and when you say sales, that's such a, you know, cliche thing to say, because sales, yeah. it revolves around relationship building. It revolves around compassion, empathy. It revolves around every way, because I was a salesman before. 
Um, mm -hmm. I sold tangibles and I was able to be a sales manager. I used to, I had a, I had a weird thing with, when it came to working with people, I used to work at Best Buy back in the day. It was my first jobs. And I was a home, I was at home theater and they would be like, That's my favorite department. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> But they will be like, yo, Rob, how are you selling these TVs so fast? Like, and also you're getting like the, the best buy black tie protection. You're getting all of these perks for everybody. And I'm like, hey, I'm just I'm just building the relationship, finding out what they want and then selling it to them. It's just more so like I listened and I gave you um, the remedy for what you're you're looking for. And it's something as simple as that. But also in hindsight, taking all of these experiences that I've that I've encountered in my whole life. This is what got me here to this point. Even yeah. Tony. So I'm just grateful for all the jobs that I've had. And I tell a lot of kids, you can't be a boss until you learn how to work. You just can't. Yeah. It's impossible. So I, and I know you know a lot about that, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, I love, you know, being the boss because really it's leadership. Yeah. Leadership is influence. You know, it's just it's it's working. It's yeah. it's working. It's um, and yeah. I'm and I'm always working on yeah. refining my leadership. And um, yeah. I have a, like I told you before we we started the show. I have a hard time getting out of the production myself. Yeah, and that you know that. I'm the same. <laughs> oh yeah, it's. I'm, I'm not. We're not. We're not afraid to get our hands dirty and get some work done. At all. It's true. It's true. Um, okay. I've been talking about this for a long time. I'm thinking about doing a series of dinner parties. Okay. And just getting out of the kitchen, yeah. you know, is 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 very difficult for for a gal like myself. Um, but but you know, there's something to be say. There's something to say about getting out of the kitchen when you're hosting. So yeah. I, I get it. Speaking of Best Buy, my favorite store. <laughs> on Michigan Avenue was Best Buy. It's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the John Hancock building. Yeah. And I used to go into that theater experience room. I mean, it's so cool. Now we have a new store called ABT. Okay. And um, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but I saw a sign the other day. It's so serendipitous. I saw a sign and it said, come enjoy the tabletop room experience and oh. the gaming experience. Oh, wow. I know. Like, oh, yeah, so that's like, a, that's a cool place because um, there's something more to just a TV. Yes. It's the experience, right? Even, yeah. so even working at Sony, we would do, I would do midnight releases and I would do demos at Best Buys. So I would go nice. into their home theater experience, set up the PlayStation 5 and have a blast. Then yes. that's, that's also another part of the gaming culture that is leaving us. It's those those retail experiences, also those midnight releases. Like back when I was growing up, my dad would take us to GameStop or Game Crazy or even Funko Land. I'm old as hell, by the way, even saying these games in places. But he would take us there and he'll, you know, sit in the car while we'll do the midnight release. The midnight release gave us a culture. It gave us community. Too, these are yeah. things that are no longer existing. So of yeah. course, foundation we do this for schools we do this inside of the library we bring kids back into the libraries so they can be able to game with all this new cool technology it's just all these full circle moments are all around gaming it's around retail it's around sales it's around marketing it's like everything combined into this into this amazing experience yeah so i i'm just curious have you yeah. ever been part of an association before rob before this no never so you must really love the trade association culture. I do. I do. Um, yeah. I know my experience going down to Chicago, you know, I, you know, I don't never go into anything expecting anything. Right. I just go in there to feel the energy, feel like what, yeah. is, what is coming to me. And I made great friends. Uh, we yes. had dialogue. I sat back and I learned, you know, I'm, I'm not yes. somebody that feels like I know too much. I'm trying to absorb as much information as possible, especially in a space like this where, they don't really teach you these things, especially right. when you up. And growing up, I didn't see this being a position that I'll be having. But <sighs> you know, that's why I'm so keen to learning and also expanding this community, not only from St. Louis, all across. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad because um if I would have if I would have looked back, you know, 10, 15 years from now, I would have never thought in a million years that I would have to explain what a trade association is. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just so simple. It's just a group of people that have business interests in, in mind together and are committed to en enhancing and elevating the industry as a whole. And it's just a safe place, which is like in pub years ago, we yeah. used to have these books um, that would just be like the the source of yeah. of of the of of the leaders in the space, yeah. which was always safe because typically, like um, you know, if you're going to have a a business that's just coming through for a quick spin, they typically don't join the association. The association yeah. is is built together by the industry leaders. So. Yeah. Um, but someone like you that really understands the community and you're 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 working in the area that I call like the trifecta, which is like the government, yeah. the school, and the businesses. And when you can bring that together, it's really perfect. So how yeah. has it been over in St. Louis? And and I should say, you're also launching the St. Louis ESTA chapter, which is even yeah. <laughs> more perfect. And did you apply for your proclamation yet? Or because when no. you get it, I've got to come. So I'm I'm gonna tell you. I have a really cool game plan of executing the proclamation. Um, our mayor, Mayor Jones, Mayor Trishore Jones is the mayor here in St. Louis. Um, she has been blown away by the things we've been doing in the community. Um, we did a flag football gaming experience last year um, that I got a random call from the radio station like eight in the morning. Oh, and cool. then my boy on the radio, he's like, Rob, they said they're doing a gaming event and they didn't call BGG. So I was like, you're crazy. They didn't call me. You're crazy. <laughs> And um, of course, they were like, you know, let's get him out there. And they were blown away. We had did the whole game and experience about virtual reality, bought tons of consoles. And, you know, us being in the space, being able to connect with a lot of the youth and mentor. We even have kids as our interns um, and, you know, them seeing it from somebody from the city who comes from where they come from with all of these cool um, resources. They were really stunned. So we had a two year partnership now um, to start a series of tournaments across St. Louis called Battle for the Loop. And um, our grand finals is coming up in September at the Edward Jones Dome where the Rams used to play. Um, we're going to have Mayor Jones there giving away the prizes. We're going to have universities giving away scholarship opportunities. We're going to give away some consoles, which is going to create this amazing um, space for kids to be able to connect with industry professionals, other kids who game and play what they play, and just all of these really cool, prominent figures. But we're going to use this time to kind of kick this off to Mayor Jones and say we need this day. And this yeah. is what in Chicago. So I believe when she sees it in this capacity, she's definitely going to, you know, rock with it. <laughs> well, yeah. And um, the, I mean, that's really one of the things that I really did not see coming. Yeah. There's, I, I, I guess I would have to say two associations that I know being that this is mostly all I've ever done my whole career. The bar does it well. Yeah. The lawyers, you know, they're encouraged to join as students while they're in college. Yeah. They're yeah. encouraged to do their um, their internships at firms, you know, yeah. so they're really shouldered. They're really supported for yeah. if anyone would have told me that we would be rolling out chapters, yeah. I would have never thought I just wouldn't have. But it's yeah. so exciting to showcase like. A proclamation, you know, it's an application yeah. and it's wonderful. Like the mayor wants to know what's in yeah. her city. Yeah. The mayor wants to know the work you're doing. Yeah. Um, the brands want to know the impact The yeah. you know, the libraries want activities and, you know, yeah. so do the park districts right. and to, you know, to get it all working together is so rewarding. So thank you, PlayStation. <laughs> Tony and, you know, thank Nintendo. They help us out a lot. Uh, Microsoft, they they hooked us up with the Xbox Series X's, the Microsoft and not-for-profits. Um, we also have really cool partnerships with Epic Games. And um, it's just, it's kind of crazy when you sit back and think about it because these brands were part of my childhood. And, you know, seeing the impact and the ways that we can kind of collaborate, I, I'm, I'm here for it. Also, and thank Riot Games as well. Riot Games is a big, big, big help. And they also are, here, are located here in St. Louis as well. Why did I not know that? Yeah, <laughs> not a lot of people do. So <laughs> even people here in St. Louis, they don't know. And I see a lot of people saying like, hey, I see you guys are playing Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty. But if you play Valorant, it puts money in your pockets. So that's what I try to like, try to tell a lot of kids in our community about changing the games that we're playing that actually come with opportunities and money. So, you know, those are the things. It's not a sense of 
I don't believe that our community doesn't have the skills. I just don't believe we have a lot of the resources to be able to compete and play these games to go to college. And, you know, if you see Maryville University, that's here in St. Louis, they have one of the biggest esport like stadiums. Same with um, St. Louis University. Um, um, so they have an esport team and I always look at these teams. I'm like, where are the kids from St. Louis? Like, where are they coming from? Why aren't the kids on these teams from the community? It's crazy. So now we are trying to put those kids in position and give them those roadmaps so that they can get in the door to do what they love. You know, that's great. That's yeah. really great. St. Louis is so lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. They're lucky. Look, the trade association is lucky to have you as well. So, um, if I'm kickstarting this in St. Louis, we're gonna do it big. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so yeah, will it scale to the whole state, or um, what are you thinking? I, of course, I believe it will scale to the whole state. We just did one of our biggest tournaments in collaboration with the St. Louis County Library. They just built the eighteen million dollar branch. It's called the Clark Family Branch. We just executed the biggest tournament there, and we had kids all across Missouri come in. We had the number one ranked Missouri smash player who's a middle schooler win my tournament. So he got the money <laughs> and, um, you know, he, he found out about it through all the promotion and videos and all cool stuff we've been making. So I believe it can expand, you know, you know, state level. I also even want people from, from Illinois to come over and see if they can compete too, because, you know, St. Louis, Missouri is, I mean, Missouri and Illinois is like uh, a, just a, a drive across the bridge. So it's not too far away either. <laughs> well, boy, I would love to join you when you do your chapter kickoff. And, yeah. you, you know, my dream when we got our proclamation was that, you know, everybody that is running chapters um, gets one. And I, I, I guess I go back to that whole leadership certificate that we offer and is basic as it sounds, getting your esports certificate at the esports trade association at the end is everyone has to do one event. An event can be so simple as a Zoom coffee. Wow. But we, yeah. I I encourage everyone to do something a little more, but you would be surprised. And, and I know you would be because hospitality and events sounds like a gift uh, as one of your gifts. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that exposure and haven't had that opportunity to do something so simple. And that's why I say, let's do a zoom co coffee. I'll come, yes. you know, because yes. the community is there in yes. your city. It's yes. tapping in to the existing community and making sure everyone is invited and feels the invitation. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to be included. And I, I do have a really amazing God has blessed me to be able to build these relationships to make people feel included. And but I will also say you guys at the Trade Association showed me that it's possible to even get a proclamation because I was like, damn, that, yeah, you guys have a day here. Like, that's crazy. Like, well, what? I know. Do you yeah. remember the proclamation in The Wizard of Oz? Oh, um, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, it's interesting, like stories, you know, what they're teaching us and, you know, applying to have a day is an application through the mayor's office, that's applying right. to have, you know, it. but who, I, I think that's what coaching is about. I think that's what trade associations are about. And that education is blind spots. Who would yeah. have thought? Well, yeah. but guess what? When the mayor's office gives you a proclamation, which is just an application, it's legit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nothing that we have above or anybody else. I love that. And, and I think that's, and you said it perfectly because there's so many blind spots in this space and a lot yeah. of space that we, we just don't know, you know? Yes. Even a lot of people that ask when I worked at Sony, was like, how'd you do it? It's like, dude, I really just applied. And it wasn't even a long drawn application. It was my name and resume. Then once I was reached out to by the hiring manager, I was like, oh yeah, this is in the bag. Once I talk to these guys, <laughs> you know, they, gotta, they gotta give you the job. But in a sense where I know now we could be able to help the next generation of kids who want to get into the industry. We can grow the next generation of streamers. We can grow the next generation of esports through these communities that we're creating. So of course, now, with our partnerships with Sony, we can now just pass forward their information to a hiring manager and say, hey, 
this kid has been through my foundation. He wants to go to school to do this. I want to be his end to the industry. And that's as simple as, that, as it is now. So no, no, no more blind spots, especially now. We want to try to eliminate as many blind spots as possible so that these you know, future generations of kids under us can now see as possible. And, you know, that's the main thing that, you know, inspires me is try to be able to do things that was, we're being told was impossible. Same with gaming, because gaming wasn't supposed to be this, right? So, you know, doing the impossible is what inspires us now to continue to do things. Wow, way to be unstoppable. Some of the statistics we heard at Esports Next about, you know, even during COVID, kids that didn't have internet, kids that didn't have um, technology needed for school right here in our backyard, yeah. you know, and it was great having the mayor's representative there giving us the, the, you know, the opportunity to really create a, and make a difference. Yes. Um, uh, and really walk the walk, you know, yeah. here I am. And, and, and I'll always say I'm never doing enough. And yeah. I launched this global association and, right yeah. here in my backyard, like there's so much to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing it. No, seriously, you're doing it. I, I, when I seen just how amazing everything was in Chicago, it made me look back and say, we have so much catching up to do in my city, you know, but now as we're talking, I'm like, we don't even have our own, you know, chapter. There's so many things that we have to like continue to tap more people into, you know, I'm just the type of guy where I keep my head down and I just do the work and I just let the work speak for me. But the more that I realize is like, I need to continue to try to keep tapping people in to where That's we're doing right. the work. So, you know, it's, it's never just one way of doing things. You can walk and chew gum at the same time. So I'm always trying to continue to figure out how to do more, as you say, like we're not doing enough, but I also want to figure out more ways of tapping more people in, in a yeah. way that's more, I don't know, like intentional, you know? Totally. Um, I've done a lot of work with people um, in their end of life, you know, a, as a chaplain and um, everyone at the end of their life says the same thing. Like, I wish I did more. I wish I made more of an impact I, or I wish I knew now what, you know, or then what I know now. And, and boy, it's like companies like what you know what that exposure you have because people don't even know yeah they don't and i and i hear a lot of people's like hey i never heard of you guys <laughs> i'm like hey i'm only one person i'm not you yeah. know saying that i'm going to blow this thing up to the next level i want it to be like that but i know yeah. so much work has to be done and yeah i'm not afraid to getting the work done i'm not afraid to you know i'll be the first person they're setting up People don't realize when you start a gaming foundation, like the equipment is the biggest job of everything, right? It is. TVs, hauling the consoles, buying the software, buying the controllers. And then there's this thing called downloadable content that you have to stay up to date with. Yeah. Um, characters coming out with fighting games. You got to stay up to date with that and new games coming out. So <sighs> let me not jump down that rabbit hole because I will be talking about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've seen that with our um with our local, you know, partners, I play games, just yeah. you know how much they do and yeah. how <laughs> fortunate we are to have them. And yeah. I'm just they're members and they've been members from the beginning and they're just great guys um and gals and uh really making a difference in our neighborhood, you know, one day at a time. A thousand percent. Um I know IPG. Um, has been doing things for a long time. I want to say my first time actually coming across um, them, I met their CEO um, at Chicago. We um, collaborated to do a, um, at the All-Star Weekend uh, with the NBA, a uh, 2K like tournament, a uh, basketball tournament. So I brought games, they had games, and we were in this space where I was like, this is crazy. This is something so cool. But this yeah. was in 2020 before the craziness happened with the pandemic. So this was like, it was like the beginning stages of the end, <laughs> but things were still, everybody was still outside. It was such a good time. And, you know, we had made a bond that day, right then and there. But mm -hmm. I didn't see me leaving, going back to St. Louis to build this. It wasn't my intention. I thought I was just going to keep working and just get another job and just keep doing what I you know, wanted to do. But I couldn't, the entrepreneur in me, um, wouldn't allow me to just not do this. You know, it, it would be so hard for me not to do this. So it, this was meant to happen for me. 
Well, we're really grateful. Um, I truly can't wait to see your chapter plan. I will come. I have family in St. Louis. What? Let's go. I know that I'm way overdue. Okay. To go see. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, and I've actually never been to St. Louis. What? I know. Wow. Well, I hey, know. I'm on home. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> But no, when you, whenever you do come, you know, St. Louis is definitely um, a, a culture pot. I think um, we get such a bad rap in a sense for things that is happening, you know, over the years of St. Louis. But this is the most welcoming, um, fun, um, accepting, inviting space. Um, and I think that the, the beauty of what we've been doing with the foundation is to create the space where people can be able to connect through shared enjoyment. So I've even seen parents play games with their kids, parents play games with other parents. And also kids play games with kids that they even didn't never know before. So they're leaving with more friends. Um, we like to elevate diverse voices um, and give the kids in the city access to technology that they can't afford or at least bridging that digital divide so that they can be able to see like you are worthy of having the newest technology yeah. and you are you know talented enough to be able to compete and go to college to get a degree so you can be able to do whatever you want in life. So. These are the things that we're trying to continue to do, changing the culture in the city. It just, like you say, continue to do the work a step, a step, a step at a time. Wow. Well, we're looking forward to the big things um, that you have offering. So what and then what was your um, what was your takeaway from esports next? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> like I said, this this is the step is to start a chapter. The step yeah. was to be able to connect. Like I was like, hey, I need to talk to Megan. We need to actually get some more work done. It was just that, you know, in the sense of like, how am I going to continue to grow what I'm doing with the support of the trade association, with the support of having our own chapter, with the support of, you know, putting ourselves into that leadership, you know, persona where we can be able to stand firm on what we're doing and making an impact with the credibility that we are getting through our partnerships. So that's... <laughs> That's the magic there. <laughs> well, folks, I think we have here a, a St. Louis chapter president, bro got game, Mr. Robert Powell, <laughs> hailing all the way from St. Louis. Uh, how, far, how, how long is the drive? It's only a four and a half hour drive. I got there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I drove straight from St. Louis to Chicago, booked my hotel, and I walked right into the trade association. My first thing was, the first, I was the first person to have an interview like on that podcast there. And we had such a good conversation. I was like, I can sit here all day and do this with you, you know. But it was so inviting. So I was like, I. I love that. I were you was your was your first interview at the activation with NASCAR or was it? Oh, right. Well, at, not at NASCAR. The one outside of NASCAR. Oh, at the Hotel Intercon with yeah. Adam. Yep, with Adam. Isn't yep. he great? I so I just. Oh my God, we've done it differently. We've had we we always have members. Yeah be the co-hosts oh um, wow. really? so so people can experience being a host yeah. of a broadcast okay. but um we might have had like three or four different members rotate but adam just loves it and That's he's so, so cool. welcoming and inviting and cool and yeah. he does yeah. a great job yeah, yeah. so that's that's great to hear i used to do radio too so i did radio podcast all that cool stuff I, like you said i'm a great host right so you, you know, are you do i do that as well so I'm very uh, multi-talented. I was called a renaissance man before, so I don't know. Hopefully um, it shines through some more. <laughs> it does shine through. It does shine through. Now, how do people get a hold of you? I'd imagine you're probably yeah. looking for donations, sponsorship, yes. oh, funding, oh, oh. Um, staff, crew, talent. <laughs> yeah. More more, more of everything in a sense. You know, we're, we, we are a small team of five and, you know, it's my family. Um, a lot of people that I grew up with and also a good partner of mine who's, who works for Nintendo is a uh, part of the foundation as well. Um, they can be able to find us at my website at bggfoundation.net. You can email me at my uh, email at robertpow at bggfoundation.net. You can follow us on Instagram at bggfndn. I'm also on TikTok at the same username, bggfndn. We make a really amazing recaps and we tell the stories of the kids who are in our spaces and the parents. Um, and also the teachers and partners that we work with as well. So we like, I really try to do the best at telling people's stories because, you know, the story is what make our history. So, you know, I like to try to always highlight them. 
but you can also um, reach out me on LinkedIn at Robert Powell III. We also have the foundation on LinkedIn as well. So tap well, in. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Thank you very much for being on Esports Connected. And thank you for all that is listening and supporting us. Well, thank um, you. Yeah, our tagline is everyone communicates, few connect. And that's what what this show is for is our real life stories and getting to know you. So thank you so much for being on the show, Rob. Thank you, Megan. Appreciate you.